Hey everybody, it's Jenny Civi. So a couple of weeks ago I talked about louvers and how they're the beginning of the HVAC system and that's how the air gets into the building. But how does the air get pulled into the building? How is it heated, cooled, filtered, dehumidified, all those things that it needs to be before it can go into the space and provide comfort to you? So that's going to be today's topic where you're going to talk about air handlers. So let's get started. So an air handler, at its simplest, brings in outside air, heats and cools it, and uses a fan to push it throughout the system into the occupied spaces. So let's draw this. We'll start with a casing. So this is basically the outside of our air handler. So the first thing the air will probably see is a damper. So let's open up an area here and put in a damper. The outside air damper controls how much of the outside air enters the air handler. How much air you bring in depends on the building load as well as how much outside air you want or need for your application. I can talk about outside air in a future video, but in general you need to bring in some minimum amount based on the area of the building and number of occupants or you could have up to 100% outside air depending on the application. The outside air damper could be set for a certain amount or percent of outside air or could modulate based on the volume and conditions in the building or based on temperature and humidity outside as well. So we'll cover this in more detail now but just know that the damper controls the amount of outside air that comes into the air handler. Next, the air passes through a filter. You want to filter the outside air before it passes through the water coils so that you don't deposit anything on the water coils. The next thing the air will pass through are cooling and heating coils. The cooling coil cools down the air and dehumidifies and the heating coil warms up the air. Whether you put your cooling coil before your heating coil or your heating coil before your cooling coil will depend on your application and we'll go into that in some detail in a future video. But I'll draw my cooling coil in first here, followed by my heating coil. Air handlers also need a fan. So I'm going to try to draw this fan using this shape tool thing. I've never really used it before and may not use it again, although this is probably the best looking fan I've ever drawn. Okay, there's our fan. Air handlers can have the fan before or after the coils. If the fan is before the coils, it's called blow-through arrangement because the air is blown through the coils. And if it is after the coils, it's called draw-through arrangement because the air is drawn through the coils. Draw-through units are more common than blow-through units, and we can talk about why in a future video. After the fan, the air leaves the air handler and goes into the system. So at minimum, with a filter, some coils, and a fan, you have an air handler. The air handler will probably also have a return air damper. So we'll draw this down here. Often the return air is mixed with the outside air and recirculated through the space. So if you have a system that has 15% outside air, then the rest of your airflow, the 85%, will come from the return air and it'll be mixed together and sent back out to the space. There's a lot of other components that can go into air handler. Earlier I was referring to hot and cold water heating and cooling coils, but you can also have DX coils, steam coils, you can have UV lights, energy recovery wheels, face and bypass, and a bunch of other things. I can't fit all the air handler information into eight minutes, so we'll cover all of these in future videos in more detail. So we'll end today's video here with our basic air handler. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and thanks for watching!